we're going to start it off with Amit Patel at Western Digital. So, Amit. Great. Thank you. So, my name is Amit Patel. I'm, uh, I like to walk when I talk, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to the front here. Um, but uh, I'm uh, the business development manager over at Western Digital. I focus on all of our connected digital media platform uh, content deals. Uh, our connected digital media player today is called WDTV. What I'd like to spend today's discussion on are on a couple of topics. One is I'll give you a brief history about my, my experience working at the company, um, talk a little about the history of Western Digital. Everyone knows it traditionally as a hard drive company, so I um, want to talk a little bit about how we're leading the forefront in the connected home, and then also just do a deep dive into one of our uh, latest live demos for WDTV Live, which is a product that just recently launched this past October, and get into some of the, the cool features and content services that we've just recently launched. Um, throughout the process. We'd like to keep this in an interactive session, so feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, I'll certainly keep it open at the end of my uh, presentation for a couple of questions before we hand it over to Mauricio, and then we'll open it up for a larger Q&A session at the end. Is that good? Mm -hmm. So a little bit about WD, and Chris, if you wouldn't mind. Um, we are one of the largest brands in the world. We're a $10 billion company, and uh, we're one of the largest uh, suppliers and manufacturers of hard drives. So people are always asking us, what is a hard drive company doing with a connected digital media player? For us, when we were looking at the business, and when I started about a year ago, I asked the same exact question, is why are we looking at the connected home as a possible, um, possible business that we want to kind of attack? And the branded products business was really built around three foundations, which started several years ago. As a hard drive company, we certainly know a lot about content, how to organize it, how to make sure it's a rich experience, and more importantly, how to store and protect that content. So when we first looked at our branded products business, the first tier that really made up that business was around this concept of store and protect. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to create um, what's called direct attached storage business unit that really helped users focus on protecting and storing all their personal music, their home videos, as well as their photos and documents. And our direct attached storage business has done incredibly well for us. Um, some of the products that you guys might have heard of, like My Passport and My Book, uh, my book um, my book, uh, Ultimate Edition, are two direct attached storage devices and now enable users to be able to nicely organize all their content on an external hard drive without having an issue of using up all their capacity on their laptops and desktops as well. The second tier of our consumer branded products business was really around this concept of really share and access. So users were coming to us, they're like, great, you've given us a solution that's a hard drive. Now I want to be able to take that content on the go wherever I'm at, no matter whether or not I have the hard drive in my hand or if it's uh, back at home. So when we're looking at our network detached storage business, what we wanted to focus on was how do we really enhance that experience and make it so that users are able to easily access all their content on the go while they're on the road. So we did a couple things to help address that. What we did is we launched a hardware product family called MyBook Live, which is a network detached storage device that simply it's a hard drive that connects to your home network at home. Users are now able to centralize all their music, photos, documents, um, home videos, all in one place in the home, and then through a suite of mobile applications that we've created, you can now get access for all that, to all that content from your iOS devices, your Android devices, and also your laptop um, on the go because it's able to do it over the 3G network or over the, uh, the Wi-Fi, simply because your drive at home is now connected to uh, your home network. And the way we're positioning this device is really it's kind of a personal cloud. There's all this talk about cloud storage and users wanting to back up all their content to these third-party clouds, but what re users really want to have is a physical device that still has all their personal content on it, but still have that cloud-like functionality. So MyBook Live really delivers on this whole experience around sharing and accessing content and having this personal cloud in your own possession sitting nicely at home, rather than with a third-party manufacturer like Amazon or uh, some other folks. The third piece were, was users were coming to us and they were basically saying, Great, we now have the ability to store and protect all of our content. We have this ability to share and access all this content across our tablet devices, our cell phones, our laptops. Yet, we haven't had an opportunity to really experience it on the best screen in the house. So in 2008, what we really wanted to focus on was how do we bring that experience of looking at all your content, consuming all your content on a 1080p HD TV screen. So what we did was we actually were one of the first players in the space to launch a connected digital media player called WDTV. On the most basic fundamental level, what that initial product was, it was simply a hard drive with an HDMI output. And what that enabled users to be able to do is they can now view all their personal content 
on their, uh, on their drive at home. Or, excuse me, not on their drive, but on their TV screen at home. Um, since then, we've launched a number of other products, and Chris, if you wouldn't mind maybe fast forwarding to a couple slides here, you can keep going. I forgot that I had a presentation. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Um, this is it, yep. So um, the whole concept of experience is really taking that simple level of having a hard drive with an HDMI output to your TV screen and evolving that. So over the past couple of years, what we've really been seeing is this innovation taking place with over-the-top content, and where we really see ourselves standing out is, as a hard drive company, we really know personal content well. We really want to make sure that, that experience is not tarnished as we look into this, this media player space. But more importantly, with all the over-the-top content services that are available, we really truly believe that it's really the marrying both personal content with over-the-top content, which really makes us differentiate ourselves from some of the other competitors that are playing this space. So we launched our latest product called WTV Live. And excuse me, the names are incorrect. But WTV Live Aloft, which is one of the most advanced digital streaming media players that are out there on the market. It's 1080p HD output. Um, it really allows users to be able to not only access the best of the, inter uh, best of the internet, but all your personal content via an external hard drive. We also have WTV Live Hub, which is on the right, which is a digital media streaming player, but also one of the most advanced digital media servers. It has a terabyte of storage built directly into the device. It allows users to store and centralize all their content at home, have the ability to use the suite of applications that we've created for mobile devices like WD Photos and WD To Go, and access all that great content that they've stored on the device at home anywhere around the world. Um, so that marries both our uh, ability to have remote access in Live Hub, but also to be able to still have access to all those great services from major entertainment partners like Hulu and Netflix and Blockbuster and so on and so forth. So what I'd like to do now is dive directly into a demo of uh, the product itself, give you guys an overview of some of the cool features that we've integrated with WTV Live, more specifically related to the services that we've launched along with some new features. And then I'll also show you some of the advanced features that we've incorporated in Live Hub because it has a terabyte of storage built directly into the device. Um, we've done some really neat things with remote access and the ability to have all your content on devices like an iPad and an iPhone and I'll, I'll walk, you guys, walk you guys through a couple of demos with that as well. So with that said, Chris, do you mind if we switch over to uh, the user interface? So this is the user interface when you first turn on the device for WDTV, that first pops up right away. Um, if we were to talk about, this is WDTV Live, this is WDTV Live Up. Both of these devices have the same user interface. It has the ability to play all the same video codecs for personal content, as well as gives you access to all the same services on both of the products. This particular device actually has a 802.11 dual band Wi-Fi integrated into the device directly. Um, this one actually has a terabyte of storage and also acts as a digital media server for the home. <clears throat> what I'll go ahead and demo is actually off of the Live Hub, but for the most part the functionality remains the same with exception to, to the digital media server component. Um, and as I mentioned, when we're looking at WDTV, we're really looking at how we've really differentiated ourselves from some of the players out here. We truly think that services are an important piece, and when we're looking at services, we want to make sure that Services like Hulu and Netflix are pretty much table stakes. If you're going to go and buy a digital media player today, you expect to have access to Hulu and Netflix, um, you know, even Facebook in some instances. But what we really want to focus on from a content strategy standpoint is we don't want to be the entire internet, right? While I can understand that Steven over here is a big fan of the Justin Bieber um, TV channel, we don't think everyone is. So we want to make sure that when we're looking at our content strategy and we're really focusing in on quality content across all the various different categories. So when we're talking about the categories, the categories we're talking about are, we want to make sure that we get the top five to 10 VOD um, providers that are out there, the top five to 10 catch-up TV services, the top five to 10 sports services, as well as music. And the idea with that is if you're looking at VOD, for example, if we go and get 100 different VOD channels and do deals with all of them, at the end of the day, 98% of the content is really going to be an overlap of one another. Everyone's doing the same licensing deals with all the studios. So it's really about providing a rich array of content available to the consumer, not really focus on any one particular category. That being said, we've had some really great um, progress with how we've uh, integrated some of our content solutions here today. As I mentioned before, um, we want to make sure that we're including what we think are the competitive services that require us to be part of the digital media player ecosystem. 
those services being, for example, Netflix, Hulu Plus, Pandora. Um, we just recently launched Hulu Plus, which now gives us access to over 30,000 current hit TV shows. Um, the service itself delivers content in 720p HD, which has been really, really great for us. Looking at the VOD segment, we now provide users with access to over 300,000 video on demand services. As we look at Blockbuster Video on Demand, we've done some really nice integrations with that particular service, and that because this device here has a terabyte of storage on it, we enable users to be able to rent and purchase content for download directly onto the device. So it's not only a streaming service, but we really want to help motivate users to download content to the device legal content so that they can get a higher quality experience when, when the playback's happening. Um, what I'd like to demo now is, um, we'll actually go here. And then the other thing that we'd like to do is, in addition to finding the table stake partners like Netflix and Hulu, we also want to be the launch partners for some more innovative companies that are looking to become, um, uh, who are looking to launch their services not only here in the US, but worldwide as well, too. So Spotify was a, a deal that we'd recently closed and had launched um, just a month ago, where we're actually one of the first digital media players that are bringing the Spotify music service to a connected digital media player. So we're really excited about that partnership. And through that partnership, we're now able to provide our users with access to over 15 million music tracks, which we really think is a compelling offer. What I'd like to do now is just demo really quickly some of the integrations of the applications that we've done and uh, give you a really good idea of um, some of the services that we are able to offer to our consumers. So in this case, I will go ahead and demo Hulu Plus. As I mentioned, the services are both the same on both of these devices. This is our $99 product. This is our $199, pro $199 um, product. So this is the Hulu Plus uh, application. We've worked really closely with the Hulu team to really optimize the solution for our platform. I'm going to have some really nice uh, tight integration with our device. In this case, the quality of the playback has been amazing. Um, while we can support 1080p, uh, output their services in uh, 720p, but the quality looks amazing. I'll go ahead and show a demo right here. So can you get capacity? We can. So is there a way to turn down the volume on the TV? Um, so what we actually have is a USB port on the front, um, on the front of the device, as well as on the back, it's USB 2.0. Um, so we love to sell hard drives as being Western Digital, so we're able to easily add capacity to it. Both the devices also have the ability to check your home network, so it has network share. So if you have any folders on your Mac or PC, or if you have a network attached storage device, um, we're able to look at the home network and play back any personal content that you have stored on those devices. that we're able to do with, uh, with Hulu Plus is you actually have the ability to, by default, it'll optimize your streaming based upon what your bandwidth is, but you still have a, a, a chance to actually change the level of quality of video playback that you're receiving as part of the stream. We also have integrated the ability to have picture in picture with Hulu Plus. So if you want to continue to look for the next episode of television that you want to watch, you can still have the content playing in the top right corner, find that next episode and go ahead and play. In terms of the quality of the content, as you can see, it's it's great. And 720p playback works really well for uh, for this device for this particular service. So that's Hulu Plus. Sorry, this is a dev unit. I should uh, should preface that. So, 
Uh, the other service that I want to walk, walk everyone through really quickly is Spotify. So Spotify is one of the leading music streaming services out in the UK. They've recently launched here in the US. Um, they have one of the largest catalogs of music content available um, across all the various streaming music services that are available today. Um, so we're really, really excited about bringing them to our device. They've done some really nice tight integrations with Facebook, which we're able to bring in as part of our uh, Facebook integration here. And then we also have the ability to provide a lot of the rich features that you would find in the online experience um, with the client that you'd have to download for your PC within this device. <coughs> and the best benefit for that is now you're taking your experience of listening to Spotify on your headphones or on your laptop speakers and now connecting it to your home entertainment system and having the ability to um, listen to it on your best, uh, best stereo system in the house. This case. So in this case, what I'm doing is I, I've actually logged in with my Spotify account. It pulls in all my playlists. What I'm able to do is I can actually add to that playlist using my cell phone, my iPad, or even directly on this device. And because it's tied to my account, all my uh, devices that I use to access Spotify will always be in sync. The best part, however, is as we look at personal content, I can actually go ahead and keep the music playing in the background while I start looking at um, photos that I'm taking, videos, as well as any other, uh, um, other services that I want to check out with the music playing in the background. So in this case, I can go ahead and start looking at all the various photos that I have on the, stored centrally on the device with the music playing and actually start a slideshow. Um, the story that I like to share is during you know, the holiday seasons, I have my family all come over, I get some music going, I have family photos playing in the background. That's just kind of a nice thing to have as a part of the ambiance when family's coming over for the holiday season. Um, I also study quite a bit for, uh, for other classes that I'm taking currently and I always like to have something in the background and this is a good, uh, good solution for that. So we have this uh, quick access to scroll through any of the photos that you'd like. You can also hit the play button and I'll start the, um, I'll start the slideshow. So those are a little bit about services. As I mentioned, we have Hulu Plus. We have all the major VOD services that we think are compelling to our end consumer. Um, looking a little more at the other features that we've integrated with this latest UI, we wanted to make sure that the experience itself was really personalized to the end consumer. And so steps that we've taken, taken to make that uh, personalization happen were actually quite a bit. So one thing we've done is we've, re we've overhauled our user interface. Um, so what you'll notice is last year with the LivePod product, we launched this new user interface. This is a user interface that we want to be able to have as a standard for new products as well. In addition to that, we've integrated some cool features here. In this case, what I have is a shortcuts bar. So I don't actually have to go into the services section or my personal content section. I can favorite content that I want to have. So every morning when I wake up, I actually go to Spotify. I'm relaying to Adele right now, so I get Adele going. I check the AccuWeather forecast. Make sure that the weather's great. We live in Los Angeles, so the weather's always great. Um, I'm actually from Northern California, so the weather out there is a bit sketchy. Um, I check my Facebook. This could be really embarrassing for me, so I apologize in advance to my personal account. I couldn't find the demo account. Um, I'll eventually let me log in real quick. And I'll know because people will start posting up on my wall. Um, so we actually have drivers built into both of these products to support accessories. So in addition to storage, we actually have a Bluetooth, or not a Bluetooth, um, a wireless keyboard dongle on the back of here that recognizes a, a wireless keyboard. You can also plug directly into this uh, a wired keyboard as well, too. Oh, whoops. There we go. So SFO to LAX clearly staying in Manhattan Beach today. Um, but we've done a really nice integration with Facebook. We work really closely with their Open Graph API. 
in addition to building this native application for our device, which you'll never see on any of our competitors' devices, we've done some nice um, tie-ins with the personal content piece. And I'll show you examples of that in just a little bit. Um, at a quick glance, you can see some of the features we've included that we're really kind of taking the best features out of the Facebook application online and have brought it to this device. So in this case, I can actually see what some of my friends are doing. Um, I can look at my wall. so on and so forth. Now what I want to show is when we look at Facebook and some of the social integrations that we're looking to make and achieve with a device like this, where I think we've done a really good job with, uh, with the social integration pieces, really from an end-to-end -end solution. So for me, I'm a huge photographer. And what I can do is I can actually use my SLR camera. When I was in Europe recently, what I did was I was taking all these pictures with my SLR camera. I only had a two gigabyte storage device on, or SD card on the device. What I did was I actually took my iPad, I had an adapter for my SD card, I put the SD card into the iPad, downloaded my photos onto the iPad itself, and then through the um, Wi-Fi at the hotel, I was able to sling over all my content that's sitting, all my content to the hard drive on this WTV Live Hub while I was abroad, and stored all the photos directly on this device over the Wi-Fi network. When I got home, I saw a sign similar to this one that you see here where it says 57 new items. In my case, it said 1,000 new items. I was actually able to back up all my photos directly on this device. So in this case, I'm now able to access all the contents that I, or all the photos that I've taken from my Europe trip. In this case, this is a demo device, so I don't have that, those, those uh, photos. But to take it one step further, because we did such a tight integration with Facebook, what we want to be able to do now is not only store and back up all your photos and content, but now have the ability to actually upload it directly to Facebook or Picasa and share it with the rest of my family and friends. And so it's all about really creating a nice user experience with uh, how we interact with content. I could have even taken that same SLR camera and via the USB port, plug it directly into this device, it would automatically sync all the photos to the photos folder on here without having to actually ever use a PC. Thought about iCloud. What's that? Thought about <laughs> iCloud integration so that stuff that's showing up in your photo stream on iCloud would automatically sync to your device? From so, so not today. For us, you know, what we see this as being is kind of a personal cloud. So I'm actually able to store all my photos, music, video files, also have access to the best of the internet. Now what I can do, because I have all my photos stored on this device, I can use this device with WD Photos and get access to all the same photos that are being stored on here and it's being streamed directly to this device now as a viewing device. So this is really the idea of having kind of my own personal cloud sitting in my living room, which is really, truly what it's about, in my opinion. And that wraps up uh, the demo of WDTV Live and Live Hub. Any questions? Oh. Are you creating all the apps in that service box then today? And do you um, so the applications are a mix. Uh, we do work with third-party developers, and we also have a great engineering team in-house. Um, so you'll notice that certain implementations of the applications are consi more consistent with one another, kind of template-formed. Um, that's because we're working internally with our, our development team. But services like Netflix and Hulu and those folks, some of them want to have a consistent experience across devices. And what's the engagement process for a customer, like let's say HBO came to you, what would, what would that, I mean? What's the process? Want to, want to be part of that? Because like on Roku, it's, it's different, right? So yeah. what's, you know, when... So we, we want to be very flexible in terms of the development path that any of our partners want to go through. Um, so we're consistently looking for new opportunities to bring new services to this device. Um, where it really starts is to engage with the biz business development team to discuss what the content opportunity is. Um, should we feel that it aligns well with the target audience and that our interests are aligned, um, we would open up our SDK to that partner and discuss what development uh, path they'd want to go through. We actually have three different development paths just so we're flexible enough to our consumer or our partners uh, to be able to program an application for a device. And then we go through a certification process with our engineering team. But there's, so there's no way to do like secret, a secret channel or a secret service? Uh, uh, as approach. of today, we're not Good supporting any signal. secret channels yeah. or, or private channels or okay. something like that. Over there. Yeah. Can we try? Do you have a question? That was basically mine. Oh, okay. Um, so we're, we certainly want to evaluate um, all of the different VOD uh, services that are available today. Voodoo is a great service. I've seen it on PlayStation 3 and on a couple of other devices. 
Um, there isn't anything that I can share today, but as I mentioned, we do want to look at all the opportunities that we feel are going to be compelling to our, to our end consumers. Yeah. Okay. the other one? Since um, your device seems to be kind of, you can sit right there in your living room there alongside your DVD player and so forth, you know? Um, no. Um, I'm a big fan of backing up all my DVDs and stuff, so what formats? Legally, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, all the ones that I have, so I don't have to be sitting there popping in DVDs. <laughs> right. What, what formats does it play back? So we actually support every possible audio, video, and photo codec you can think of, and that's what really separates us. We want to make sure from a personal content experience that you don't put a photo or a video file onto this device and you get a format not supported. We think that's a terrible user experience. Um, so in that case, we support all the all the different flavors of Kodak you can think of. ISO format. Yep. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I just sold the device. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of those behind you already. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a DL DLNA support in the device? We do. Um, we, so we do have DLNA built into both of these products. And what that enables us to be able to do is we can store content onto this and any other DLNA compliant device that's on, attached to your home network is able to stream content from this device onto an iPad, for example. So the best use case for me is my little nephew and niece love to watch Care Bears. Not really my cup of tea. So they'll be watching Care Bears on Netflix. I'll be checking out some of my friends' home videos. A lot of these guys are really into GoPro right now. So they've been taking some really cool video footage of them snowboarding, skydiving. So they've been giving me the content and they've been loading it to my device. They, they've attached their iPad to my device. So from their house, they go out and sling content over to my device and then I'll see that I have five new videos to look at. I can actually watch it on my iPad while my nephew and niece are watching the characters on the TV screen. So with the iPad, then you'd need to use HTTP, right? Because the iPad doesn't do DLNA, right? So there, there are applications out there that's able to look at your home network and they are third-party applications. That is an SMB, probably then. I, network, about DLNA. So we have DLNA, UPnP, and Samba, but I'm not really clear on the technical side. But I'd be happy to to introduce you to our, our, our uh, engineering team, and they can answer your questions for you. Um, you have an app in development for the iPad for the remote support. Um, so as of, as of today, we have a couple of methods in which to control the WTV device. Um, we have a remote that we package with the device. We also have a uh, keyboard support. Um, you know, again, as from a from a user experience standpoint, we want to explore all the various options that it, that would allow us to control the device. So um, nothing's off the market at the moment, but nothing planned as well. All right. I'm going to turn it over to Mauricio. Hi. Thanks. Bye. All right. Well, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Mauricio Perez. I work in the business development product integration team at Sling. Desi is our lead sales business development here in Southern California and I'm going to give you a quick overview of uh, Sling. How many of you are familiar with Sling? We've been around for quite some time. Yeah. I walk around the show, everybody's just like, oh look, I have it on my phone. I was like, hey, everyone's giving me a demo of Sling, so this is great. So it's like going to visit relatives, so it's always a pleasant experience. So um, what, um, next slide please. So a quick uh, background on Sling. Our uh, company was launched in 2004. We've been around for about five, six years. Um, the whole content is just introducing the co concept of place shifting. It's really taking your content from your home you know, to your mobile device, anywhere you go. Uh, we have a number of technologies that really make that available, you know, uh, adaptive streaming, uh, players to multiple devices. And now we're getting into more and more connected devices. And I'll show you that in a second, okay? Um, we have distribution in about 22 countries and um, 5,000 store locations. Great partner of us is uh, Best Buy, Fry's Electronics, uh, Micro Center, and Amazon. Um, we also, we have expanded our business. We used to be just consumer. Now we're going more into uh, OEM kind of partnership with Dish Networks. Uh, our parent company is Echostar. So we are actually embedding our technology, software, hardware into uh, Dish set-top boxes. And if you are a dish subscriber, you actually get the capability of Sling as a value added services from, from Dish for free or for a minimal price. There's two separate products, and I'll show you that in a second. As a company, we're about 300 employees. Um, we have offices in Foster City, uh, New York, and BTC in India. Next. 
Um, so TV Everywhere, I think we, we heard a lot about like what TV Everywhere, everyone has a different concept about like what kind of content you have, but in my personal opinion, TV Everywhere is just taking your content, everything you have on your TV, and you can watch it on any device at any time. It's not like the minute I leave the country, I, I don't have access to that content because I'm geo-restricted to that. You know, so that's one of the key functionalities that we bring to the market. The ability to actually take your content from your TV, live TV, DVR, anything that connects to your set-top box, we're able to capture it, process it, send it over IP, and display it onto your mobile device or your PC. So that leads really to watching your TV everywhere and going beyond the box, right? It's not just being in the living room or being in the home, but really taking that content where you are on the go. Next. So it's uh, well, a little off there, but it's uh, go to the game and enjoy the news. Uh, this, this is kind of interesting. I was at a show uh, some time back and uh, ran into an uh, owner of the Mavericks. And uh, he, he was telling me, I love Slimbox because I'm watching my game, my, my team play while I'm watching like competition. Yeah, who I'm going to play ne next week, right? Or who's my next competitor? So it's actually having that functionality. Next one. It's like, um, next slide, please. It's like, go on vacation and still watch your team play, right? So don't miss a game. And when you're traveling abroad, next. Uh, it's really being able to go overseas or to another country and still have access to local TV. Um, I did quite a bit of travel in the last six months and it's amazing. You know, when, when you're like in Asia or Latin America and you still want to watch your shows or, oh yeah, I wish I could just DVR that, that content, you know, still it's awesome experience. So um, quick background on our technology. Um, we have uh, basically components, which is really hardware piece and software on the hardware. Um, consumer side, we have the Slimbox Pro HD and Solo. Um, this sell at retail. And uh, we also have introduced our OEM products. Slimbox 120 is one of them that we sell internationally. We also have a Sling component on set-top boxes for DISH. That's a 922 there, and Sling adapter. The Sling adapter really specific for DISH networks. It connects via USB port to the set-top box. So it requires virtually no setup. So you get the box from the mail, connect it to USB, and log into your Sling uh, DISH account, and you're able to Sling from, from DISH page for free. Um, on the software side, we have clients to multiple operating systems. We have been concentrating mainly on um, Android and iOS because they're the most popular devices. And we have optimized streaming for larger viewing screens like Android and iPad. We'll show you that in a second. Next. Oh, and one thing I forgot, go back one. Um, one of the things that we have right now going to market is really the uh, connected devices. So uh, we're uh, beta in beta right now with Boxy and Google TV. So the, the whole concept here is really you can connect to your home set-up box from another room or across the country or around the globe to a slim box via a, a connected device. So it's, it's just really, that, that part of the market is really growing for us because as more and more devices are becoming connected, you know, it's actually adding value to device manufacturers. So we, we see more, much more adoption in that space. And our traditional players. Um, one of the things I want to mention is that the value for our solution is really the user interface. It's very simple. You know, it would display the native remote control, and you really require no new UI learning experiences like remote control you have at home. You press play or play, change channel up, channel up. There's a slightly you know, five or 10 second delay depending on your bandwidth. But other than that, the, the streaming capability is just great. OK? Jesse, you probably want to talk a little bit about the products and what we have. All righty. OK, so I'll go ahead and pass this around. This is our basic model Slingbox right here, the Slingbox Solo. Um, it is a, a standard def streaming Slingbox. It will give you access to your high def channels. And the Solo has one single input on it that you would use hooking up to your set-top cable or satellite box. So one of the limitations with the Solo is that you're kind of stuck when you're watching something on a mobile device. When you change the channel, either on your phone, tablet, or on your computer, it will actually change the channel back at your house. So 
if my imaginary girlfriend right now is trying to watch TV, we're going to interrupt what she's doing. That's okay, with it, but so uh, with the Pro HD, not only do you get the high def streaming, but you also have multiple inputs on the back. So you can have your cable box connected on a component input, but we also have a TV tuner that's built in, and that'll give you access to either over-the-air channels, um, basic cable, or if you have a dual tuner DVR, you can access that second tuner. That way, it doesn't affect what people are doing at home. So also, additionally, there's an extra input on there, another RCA, and for that, you can hook up a DVD player, um, another connected device, such as a Western Digital Player, I've heard, or um, some people even hook up a home video camera to use for home security as well and make that one of their inputs. And you can switch back and forth between them. Um, also on the list here is the Sling Link. So because the Sling Box is a wired Ethernet connected device, um, you do need to actually plug it in directly to your network source. Uh, and if you don't have a network connection near your television, we make these sling link, which is our, our power line ethernet bridge. So that'll uh, connect your sling box from one room to your router in another room, if they're not the same place, basically. And then, of course, we already went over the OEM products, um, the sling box 120, um, which is uh, working with our dish partners, of course, the sling box uh, 700U as well. So those are specifically for dish customers. Uh, and they'll only work with the dish set-top boxes, but essentially the same features as all the other sling boxes. I'll also go ahead and pass around my phone here so you get, uh, you get a sample of kind of how the mobile devices work. Yeah, let me move along. So our major markets are sports fans. Um, everybody wants to be in touch with the game in real time. They don't want to hear what happened later on. Uh, they want to stay up to date with what's going on. Also, business travelers. Uh, it makes a lot of sense financially for people who spend a lot of time traveling uh, to connect to their home cable, which normally they'd be wasting money on not being home to watch it. Um, another emerging market for us is college students. Again, financially, it makes a lot of sense. Instead of having to pay for cable in your dorm room and buy a big TV, you can set one up at your parents' house, sling it into your laptop, and uh, get away with not having to pay for anything. Save some money for books or beer or whatever. Um, also, especially a lot of people, yeah, especially the beer, right? A lot of people are actually using the sling box just around the house uh, and finding it really easy with their tablet or their laptop to have a mobile TV so they don't have to install one in every room. That way you can be in the laundry room doing laundry, in the kitchen, cooking, and still stay up to date with the news or whatever you want to watch. Um, basically, having that mobile TV experience and um, I, I guess about 30% of our customers don't even ever hook up their sling box for remote access, um, they, which means they're pretty much just using it around the house, which is kind of nice. And that's, that's that's so pretty much the that. same, kind of what we went over <laughs> in around the home. Oh, second home and vacation home also. Um, and he's going to go over watching, taking that mobile experience to another television in a second. We're going to show you the Boxy and Google TV betas that will be coming out soon. And so the game changers, we're always analyzing new devices. Uh, right now, we do support the Android, iOS. Um, we have native apps for the phones and the tablets. Uh, we also do support Windows Mobile cell phones as well. So, so as you can see here, just kind of on the go, it's a lot easier to tap in and use your phone, your tablet, or whatever you have, um, instead of carrying around a large satellite and television like you see here. Um, and another big thing with Sling is compatibility with existing technology. So you don't actually have to go out and buy a separate device or a, a, a mobile TV that you have to carry a charger for. You can use the phone that you already have. You can use the tablet that you already have. You can use the laptop that you take on business trips. And uh, cost effective in that sense. So, should I pass it back along? Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I think that the whole concept here is really watching your content. And, and the other thing is uh, uh, smarter way to move people. Okay, obviously, um, not a whole lot of action about that, but you know. <laughs> 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 okay. So, um, where to buy? We sell Best Buy, Amazon, Micro Center, uh, and Fry's Electronics here in, in California. Uh, well, I wanted to show you a couple of things. Um, I was able to connect. Um, 
Yeah, let's switch to the Google TV. Um, I have that. Hey, there we go. So, a couple of things. Um, we just launched our player for Android Tab, and uh, what you see here is a stream coming in from uh, Seoul, Korea. So, as you can see, the quality is just great. I'm, I'm running here on um, LTE um, 4G Verizon, and there's no jittery pause or anything like that. Uh, the other thing that we do is that we have skin remote control specifically for the devices. So if I go to the screen here and uh, I bring up remote control, it's a native remote control for um, um, SK Telecom, which is in Korea. And obviously you don't have to learn a new device remote control or UI interface, you know, if it's the remote control that you're familiar with and the one they use at home, that's what you, you have. It will be exactly the same if you have Comcast or Time Warner, right? So, pretty cool right there. Um, what I'm going to show you right now is really the um, application that runs on Google TV. Um, right now, it runs as a link. I'm connected to it. And um, it requires you to have a login and password. Obviously, I, I just logged in. And what I'm going to do is just connect to Box. Um, this is out of Foster City, my office. and. Uh, what the application does first is actually does a bandwidth detection and synchronization. It checks for the best optimal bandwidth between the device and the player, and it will start streaming. And what you can see is that we get very close to high quality on, on the uh, streaming. Um, through the remote control or keyboard on the device, whether it's a Google TV or Boxy, you have access to uh, a uh, unified user interface. So the nice thing about it here is that you can go to DVR, you know, you could actually go to skip pause, you can change channels. Um, also, if you don't know, we have a list of commands. So it gives you a space bar, it'll kind of bring them up and um, give you that interface as well. Let's do a couple of things here so that uh, you see this live TV. First of all, let's go to guide. So program guide will come up and it'll tell me everything that's on my guide right there. Oh, so watching the cooking show. So let's say um, I want to watch something else. So go to 110, change the channel. So automatically um, sends a command, buffers that out and it goes to 110, click select. So now switching channel, same thing I can do is really go back to my DVR um, and uh, bring my DVR guide, say well what do I have stored in my DVR, select the video that I have there and um, any recordings that I have I can play or I can just set up a new recording and so on. So the user interface is exactly the same that you have. All we're doing is really transcoding that signal basically to your device. And at this point, the benefit of having a player on a connected device is that you can enjoy that football game, right, or that, or that baseball game on a larger screen. Here, you know, you can't really tell that this is coming from, I don't know, 500 miles down north and, you know, I can't even see a, a, a jitter or any kind of fluctuation on, on the speed or, or the signal itself. So the other thing that it's actually doing in real time is um, optimizing the speed so that if there's an additional bandwidth, it will optimize for that, or if there's a drop in bandwidth, it will give me a message and will automatically adjust for the uh, connectivity. Um, so connected devices, we, we actually have a beta, the Logitech and Google TV on Sony devices, and also BoxyBox. Um, new products, uh, we just launched the Android tablet, um, and that's available in the marketplace. We also have applications on iOS, and uh, our web-based player is actually uh, a free application. 
Um, another application that we're demoing right now, I can show you on the big screen, is really Facebook. We have an embedded player that runs on your Facebook profile, so you can um, have a little bit more social interactivity for, for your content. Let's say you're watching a show, you can tag on it and say, I'm watching this show, or share with your friends, I'm watching this particular show, I like it. And, and do a little bit more social interaction with the content that you're enjoying from your DVR or your TV. Okay, um, that's all I have right now. You know, the ability here, the, the value of Sling is really taking your content anywhere you go. As you can see, I'm streaming here from overseas. That's uh, from Northern California, and um, it's actually a great quality. You know, any questions? Do they sell you on Sling? Wow, we'll great. Cooking. Great audience. See you in the basement. Right. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. I think we had a lot of right?